All right. Good morning, Good everyone. Morning. How are our Victory Kids out there and everybody else joining along with us? Hello. How are you doing this week? We are so glad you guys are joining us. We are actually on week number four in our last week of the series called Wise. This is it. This is the end. That's right. Of this series. I know. Hard to believe. It's been about pretty quick. We're already diving into October next week. Oh, man. And, and so, the cooler weather. Yes. It's coming. It's like fall. It I can, is I can coming. Think about campfires and yes. jumping in leaf S'mores. piles. Yes. All oh. of that. Mm, yum. No Sounds doubt. yummy. All it's, right. We have so much to get into. We got to jump right in. That's right. All right. Hang on. Silly questions. Mm. Things that make you go, hmm. Things that make you go, hmm. hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. You ready? Off. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all yeah, think about this. Would the ocean be deeper if you removed all of the sponges? Mm, like, like real sponges. Like there's sponges in the ocean. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, why doesn't glue stick to the inside of the bottle that it comes in? You go, so everybody, everybody kind of go, hmm. Mm-hmm. Why do you drive on parkways and park on driveways? Hmm. Why do skydivers wear helmets from 10,000 feet over? You know? If a cow laughed, would milk come out of its nose? <laughs> I like that one. That one's good. How about this one? Why does your nose run and your feet smell? That's weird. Yeah, yeah. Why don't your lips touch when you say the word touch, but they touch when you say the word separate? Interesting. How about, is the color orange named after the fruit, or is the fruit named after the color? Mm. Mm. Would a fly without wings be called a walk? Ooh. Everybody, hmm. hmm. Do fish get thirsty? Don't know. I don't know. It's interesting. Right. Some so interesting questions. They're silly questions, questions but I, th- I think they're very interesting. I mean, maybe you guys have some. Y'all could maybe post it out to us this week on Facebook or something. Say, hey, I got a silly question for you. I don't know. Those are kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Things that make you go, hmm. Yeah. I don't know. All right. Everybody. Stand up on your feet. Does that mean me too? Do I stand up? No, too? we can oh, stay oh, we say, seated, okay, but right. because we're just gonna, we yeah. already know these okay. All right. answers. But you stand up on your feet. All right, are you guys ready? We're gonna play a little challenge and game. Now, obviously, okay. we're on the honor system. It you're, sit down if yeah. if you you're not if here you, in the you room. have to sit down. Okay, so you'll understand in a second. All right. right. So we're gonna ask a question, and okay. if you answer yes to this question, then sit down. Okay. All right, so that right. makes sense. Yes, All right. already. All right, so go ahead. The first one. Okay. If you have ever p- performed in front of a large audience, hmm. the answer is yes, you need to sit down. All right. So a large audience would be like like hundreds of yeah, people. Yeah, a couple hundred people. Like hundreds of yeah. people. Yeah. All right, so. Um, all right, second is if you've ever broken a bone. Mm. All you bone breakers, sit down. Okay. If you've ever bought something that you saved up with your own money, Ooh. sit down. All right. What about if you have ever played on a sports team? Hmm. We're, we're getting more sitting down. Okay. All right. More of them, I know, are sitting down. If you have ever broken a bone. I just said that oh, you one. Said that one. I did. I mean, I guess right, if you've broken sure. two bones. Yeah, if you're broken two. No. If you've broken two bones, sit down. Well, I wasn't. I guess I was just thinking on the next one. All right. Have you ever watched two movies in a row, like back to back, without any break? Just boom, movie, straight into the movie. Mm, okay. What about if you've ever gone to an amusement park? Mm. If you've ever been to the zoo. Ooh. There just went all of the kindergarten yeah, class. Yeah. I think they just sat down. What about have you ever. Gotten a stomach ache. Mm. Okay. Okay. I'm think, sorry. I think I got him on this one, Miss Lori. All right. Have you ever ridden a bicycle or a scooter? Oh. I think we left, lost everybody. I think I everybody's think so. now sitting down. I th- if you have not sat down at this point, we need to know about it. Yeah. Just saying we need to know yeah, about so it. Yeah, so none of those count for him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's pretty that's So amazing. if you were still standing, I need you to get your name to me. All right. But if you are Honor. still standing... Go ahead and sit down. Yeah. Yeah. All right. There you well, go. 
Well, have you, let me ask you, have you ever asked a question that maybe you were too scared or too embarrassed to ask? Have you ever had a question that's like, you know, they say there's no stupid questions. You know, you know really, there, there isn't, and there certainly isn't with God. But you ever asked, you know, ever said, like, I can't ask that question? Are you, like, too embarrassed to ask about it? Or I think know? we all have at some point, yeah. I mean, had that question that, and usually sometimes the question that we have is, like, how do you do that? Like, right. we're, we're too embarrassed to say, how do you do that problem, whatever the problem is? Right. I mean, I know for me, it was always, how do you do that math problem? Mm. Because math was never, never a good subject for me. And so, for all of you very smart well. people in math, kudos to you. Mr. Paul's very good in math. There's I'm not. Math I've struggled there. in math. And so, you know, it you was know, always one of those things. That. We're all good at certain things and maybe not so good at other things. And right. sometimes we need to ask for, I mean, I'm not real good with, like, handiwork. And so I have to sometimes ask people, hey, how do you do this? I mean, I think about, I think about like, people that do IT stuff, like, like computer stuff. How, oh, do you, yeah. how, how, how do I fix this? The computer screen is blank, and I can't get it back on, and. You know, right. Push the power button on that. You know. Right. But, you know, all this brings us to? Our big, big idea. idea. That's it right. brings big us idea. to our, our big, wise big idea. idea. And the big idea for this week is? We could ask God our questions. Yes. God loves to have our questions. That's right. No matter what, you can ask him. I mean, if you have a math problem question, you can ask him. Now, let me just clarify. He's probably not going to take your pencil and solve your algebra problem on the paper for you. However, he will put very smart teachers in your classroom that will show you right. and teach you how to solve that algebra problem. Yeah. yeah. So he will answer your questions, but it's not always how we want. We're like, here, you take the pencil, God, and take my test. Well, it's not, that's not the way he answers us. No. But he gives us teachers that help teach us in order to solve problems. That's right. That's so, right. I mean, that's awesome. I mean, we ask questions when we don't know or we're unsure and we need right. answers. And sometimes we're too shy or we're too afraid. But guess what? God wants us to ask the questions. Absolutely. He wants us to ask the questions. He wants to hear. Yeah, because he's ready, he's ready to answer those questions for us. And, you know, there's so many different different things that we don't know. And when we listen to God, he can help us through those things. That's right. And in Nehemiah, yeah, this there book, is a story about this. I have. We, I'm I think you have it already. a little up. bit of it. And so we're going to catch a, a little bit more of it on video, but kind of bring you up to speed. And there's okay. this guy by the name of Nehemiah. And he was in the court of a king, and he actually was his, his servant. And he, he actually served wine to him. And so the king noticed him one day. He's like, Nehemiah, why are you sad? And so, you know, actually in, in chapter 2 uh, of Nehemiah, it says in verse... Um, Verse 3, it says, I replied, long live the king. How can I not be sad for the city where my ancestors are buried is in ruins and the gates have been destroyed by fire? And then the king asked him back, how can I help you? And matter of fact, hmm. Nehemiah then, then began to seek God. He began to seek God. Said, all right, God, I need your help. I need to know how to answer the king. And so he began to question God. Said, all right, God, I need some help because I'm in a situation. Now, he was in a foreign land, and he was serving this king that really didn't, you know, he could have thought didn't care about his people. And so he wanted to go to his land where he had come from and rebuild the walls that had been torn down because they had been conquered. And so he asked these questions thinking, okay, what do we do? And so his first big thing was, I mean, he had to get permission from king, king by the name of Artaxerxes, which I think is a cool name, by the yeah. way. And so he had to ask some questions. I mean, he had to ask the king, one, for favor. I mean, he, he said, king, I, I need some letters and so the people that we go through their land, they'll give us permission. And then also, I'm going to need to ask some people when we get over there for some pl supplies to rebuild the wall. I mean, he was asking big things. His questions to right. the king were really big. Right. And it wasn't going to be an easy task. And so as he went forward with that, you know, he's like, okay, I need to count on God. I'm going to ask God some questions and really put it on God. Say, God, hey, can you help me with this, God? I need all these different things. And so he, matter of fact, he met some enemies along the way. There was two guys by the name of Sanballat and Tobiah. And they began, matter of fact, they actually were kind of disrupting the whole thing. Like, what are you doing? How are you building all this? Who, who gave you permission? And so they began to challenge him. 
But as Nehemiah began to, exp- to explain to the people that are around it, the other Jews that were near that area, like, hey, this is what we're doing. They became to get excited. They said, yes, we are ready to help you build this. And so God gave Nehemiah and the people favor to rebuild the wall. And so it was a great story. But listen, I want you guys to catch a little more. We actually have a video that we're going to show that yes. gives you a little bit more of it. So you guys check this video out that tells you all about Nehemiah and building. God's the story, Nehemiah. So part of God's story is about a guy named Nehemiah, and it goes like this. Remember God's family? They were called the Israelites because they lived in, you guessed it, Israel. But some of them lived far away from their home. And one of those guys was Nehemiah. He lived in Persia and worked for the king. One day, his brother told him that a city in Israel called Jerusalem was suffering. And many people there weren't following God anymore and their city wasn't in very good shape. Nehemiah cried, God, you are wonderful, but your family's home is in trouble. Please help us. When I serve the king his wine today, make him pleased with me and have him do what I ask. Later, when Nehemiah served the king's wine, the king noticed that Nehemiah looked sad. So the king asked why. Nehemiah told him about Jerusalem and asked if he could go back to rebuild the wall. The king could have killed Nehemiah for asking to leave, but instead, he said go. He even helped. That's because God heard Nehemiah's prayer and answered it. Anyway, Nehemiah went to work rebuilding the wall, but little did he know he was going to need to ask for a lot more help from God. See, God and his family have always had enemies, and these enemies wanted to stop Nehemiah and the people helping him. First, they made fun of them. So Nehemiah prayed again. He said, God, some people hate us. Please get rid of them, and went back to work. Now, God does hear and answer every prayer, but sometimes not in the way we expect or even in the way we want. And at first, it seemed like God wasn't answering this one at all, because when the enemy saw that Nehemiah was still building, they planned an attack. But Nehemiah trusted that God heard his prayer even if it didn't feel like it. And God did! He caused some people to overhear the enemy's plan and warn Nehemiah. Even though the enemies were still after him, Nehemiah planned a defense and told the others, Don't be afraid of your enemies. Remember the Lord. He is great and powerful. And on they worked, building, building, building. The closer the wall got to being finished, the more Nehemiah's enemies realized they couldn't stop him by making fun of him or by attacking him. Hmm, time for something else. They tried everything. They sent messages to get Nehemiah to leave the wall and meet them. He wouldn't. They hoped Nehemiah's hands would get weak, but Nehemiah had asked God to make his hands stronger. They even paid a priest to ask Nehemiah to leave the wall and come to the temple. But Nehemiah trusted God more than anyone else, even the priest, and he refused to stop doing the job God had given him. Kids, are you willing to listen to God and obey Him, no matter what? Well, finally, the wall was done. God's family got to go home again, and Nehemiah's enemies found that nothing stops God's plans. The Israelites celebrated and praised God, and as they praised, they realized how much their sins had hurt God, and they felt terrible. They told God they were sorry and thanked Him for helping them. Then they made a brand new promise to follow Him, and Jerusalem was once again a safe place where people honored God. And that's the story of Nehemiah. But just so you know, there's another story where God fixes something that's broken. See, one day, God would send a very special rescuer, not to save a wall, but to save the world. He made it possible for not just Israelites, but everyone in the whole world to confess their sin to God, thank Him for His rescue, and follow Him. And just like that old wall was made new back then, our old lives can be made new right now, because Jesus has rescued us. And that's a part of God's story. All right, I hope you guys learned lots about Nehemiah and how they built the wall, and it was a great story. I mean, God really used him 
And he asked God questions, and God helped answer the questions that he needed to do what he had to be done. Absolutely. All right. So I'm going to ask a question here. Okay. All right. So do you guys know what this is? Uh, All yeah. right. So we're going to pretend that we don't know okay. what pretend this here we don't is. Know. Yeah, we're going to pretend. So because, you know, most everybody knows what this is, but I thought we could use it potentially as an object lesson. All okay. right. So in asking questions. So if I did not know, if I walked in and I did not know what this is, I might use it for something other than what we would normally use it for, right? So like I could use it for a cane. Yeah. Oh, I got an idea. Because it pushes. I could use it to like say, Miss Lori, come here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You could. yeah. All right. Or I could use it for, watch this. Mm. I could use it for my stuffed animal holder. You, you could, can put all your stuffed you animals in there. You carry your groceries through the grocery store with it. Yes. You could, yes. That'd you could carry cool. your groceries. That would be so much fun. We're going to put our fun. groceries in here. Yeah. I'm going to try that. Next time I go to the grocery store. As long as you store. don't get a whole lot of canned, like canned soft drinks and stuff, that would be bad. Ooh, and canned, yeah, it might yeah, break through. Kind of, yeah. But if we didn't know what something was, it's best sometimes to ask the question, what is that and what do you use it for, mm. rather than doing something silly with it. Oh, because don't point. you think I would look so silly going through the grocery store with an umbrella to put all of my stuff in? I think people might think I was crazy. I was cuckoo. Not maybe I maybe I shouldn't do that. Well, I mean, but you know. if you have a question, it's important to ask someone. Yeah, for the answer. That's right. Well, sometimes you know the things that we use, God gives us a new understanding of what it's about. You know, and so we think we know what the uses of it for, but sometimes God shows us things and shows new ways to use what He's given us. Oh, yes. And so we see it in a different way. When we see it through God's eyes, God allows us. Like, like somebody has, we may ask the same question to several people, and several people may give you different answers. And some of them may be yes. wrong, but yet they may have different answers that will both work for your questions sometimes. Right, right. And Absolutely. so we're going to get in, uh, there's another story, Miss Lori, in, in Matthew, and it's, it's okay. with Jesus. Jesus had done something really, really cool. One, he had fed yes. 5,000 people right yes. before the story happened. And so he immediately sends the disciples out on a boat. And yeah. I, I'm, you know, the story goes, you think that Jesus really kind of knew what they were getting into. And so they get in a boat, and they got into a huge storm. Ooh. And while they're out there, Jesus is actually Hey, on they the shore. needed the umbrella. Possibly. I think they needed more than an umbrella. Oh, okay. And yeah. so Jesus was there on the shore, and he knew what was happening. And so Jesus, instead of, you know, kind of, you know, taking another boat, Jesus decides to go ahead and walk across the water to them. And so this is found in Matthew chapter 14, uh, starts at verse 22. And so he begins walking out there. And so when the disciples see th this image, they're like, oh, they're scared. They're, they're actually thinking it's a ghost. They're like, oh, yes. my gosh, this is they're it. Like, we're done. We're, we're in deep trouble. And so Jesus gets out there, and actually he, he assures them, like, it's okay. It's just me. And so I'm going to pick up. I'm going to actually read out of my, my Bible here in verse uh, chapter 14, verse 28. And it says this, uh, or verse 27. Jesus spoke to them and said, don't be afraid. He said, take courage, I'm in here. In verse 28, Peter, who happened to be on the boat, called and said, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. And yes, yes. come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and he began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. And Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Here's a question. Why did you doubt me? And when they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped, and so then the disciples kind of looked, and oh, my goodness, that's Jesus. I mean, they were amazed by it. And so I guess a couple of questions come from it. One, right. why, were the, why were the disciples afraid when they saw Jesus? Well, they didn't know it was him. Yeah, they I mean, thought it was a. They thought he was a ghost coming. Yeah, can you imagine you're in a boat under whatever, however deep the water was, and suddenly you see like what you think is a person walking on the water towards you? Right, and I mean, I mean sometimes when Jesus asks us to do something unfamiliar, we can become afraid. Yeah. That's yeah. what happened to Peter. I mean, the other question is, how do you think Peter felt when he was in the water and began to sink in the water? Scared. That's yeah. my first thought. He I mean, was scared. I mean, I got a hand it to the guy. The guy got out of the boat and jumped, you know, hey, Absolutely. if Jesus can walk on the water, I can walk on the water. Yeah, he was willing to, for sure. And so, and, yeah, we think about, you know, the doubt and the questioning that may have happened in there. Right, but you know what I noticed is that Jesus never got angry with no. Peter, even when he started to doubt. That's right. He, when he began to question, Jesus still didn't get mad. You yeah. know what he did? He just reaches down and helps Peter back up into the boat. Yeah. 
Because Peter, I'm sure Peter has some questions in mind going, oh, what do we do? What, what's going to happen? Right. Yeah. I mean, Jesus shows us we can go to God with anything, including questions, doubts, That's fears. Right. It doesn't matter what it is. We can go to God with any of that. Absolutely. And he doesn't get angry at you. He doesn't get mad at you. He is willing to listen and then answer. That's right. That's right. Yeah. All right. So have you ever heard of any of something that maybe you didn't quite believe mm. or something that you were like, you questioned? Could that be true? I mean, yeah. could that be real? There's all kinds of, yeah. I yeah. Mean, today's day and age, everybody goes, well, if it's on the internet, it has to be true. That's not always true. Yeah, it's not always yeah. true. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to ask you some questions. Okay. All right. All right. And you're going to tell me true or false. True or false. So shout think? it out. Okay. Shout it out. All right. All right. Penguins can smell toothpaste from four miles away. Mm. What do y'all think? What do you think? I think it's false. False. Yeah. That is correct. Okay. It is false. Uh, in Tokyo, Japan, a bicycle is faster than a car for trips of less than 50 minutes. Hmm. True or false? Hmm. What do you guys think? It's true, right? True. True. Correct. Yeah, because lots of people. There's lots of people, and so it's easier to get on a bicycle. Yes. All right. 50 years ago, M&M candies were candy-coated peas during a chocolate shortage. 50 years ago, M&M's. It was chocolate-covered peas. Yeah, is that I'm, true or false? I'm pretty sure that's false. That is false. Yeah, Correct. I think they all do the answer as well. All right. When glass breaks, the cracks move faster than 3,000 miles per hour. This sounds like a math question to yeah, me. Yeah, that sounds impossible. That sounds impossible. When glass breaks. When glass breaks. The cracks 3, move faster than 3,000 miles per hour. That sounds insane. That is true. That's true. Wow. That is true. That's, that's amazing. A violin contains 70 pieces of wood. Where are my violin players? Do you know this answer? 70 pieces of wood for violin. 70 pieces of wood for violin. What do you got? No idea. True. True. Wow. True. All right, last one. In Japan, they have square watermelons there mm. because they stack better. I've actually square seen this. Square watermelons. I've actually seen this. This is true. True. They put them in these little boxes. And they I doubted there. this yeah, until they I saw stack. pictures. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. They yeah. grow them in boxes. Yeah. That's how Impressive. they get them to be square. Yeah. So you'll have to find that out one day. That's right. All right. So with that, Mr. Paul, I think it's time for some review questions. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right. So we'll ask Yeah, go on our series. Question. Yes. Yes. And so here's the first one. The king who asked God for wisdom, was what was his name? Who was the guy? You guys Who know? Who is Solomon. Solomon? That's right. That's right. Yes. All right. And what was it that Solomon brought into the temple that he was building? We built the temple. What did he bring into the temple? It was, if you remember, he brought the Ark of God, Ark of the Covenant uh, of God. In yes. There. Okay. Remember the story. We're talking about uh, he gave wise words was what, two what were two women, women arguing about? Who, what were they arguing over in front of Solomon? What was it that they were arguing over? over. It was a baby. A baby. Remember, Solomon said he'd cut it in half and give half to one and half to the other. That's right. All right? Two things we learned this month that we can ask God for. Yes, we can ask God for a couple of things. As a matter of fact, I mentioned yes. one just now. One was we can ask God to give us the, like Solomon did with the baby, the right words. Right words, yes. And the other one was the one that we did today, which was we can ask him our questions. Yes. All yes. right. And so, all right, uh, what is the name of the guy who was the cupbearer to King Artaxerxes? Hint, hint, hint. We just talked about him, and it was in the book of the Bible that was also in there. It was? Nehemiah. Nehemiah. Good. All right. The city Nehemiah wanted to rebuild the walls of is? What was the walls? It was the city of Jerusalem. Yes. All right. Final question. Book, chapter, and verse. This month's memory verse says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God and it will be given to you. And that is found in the book of James. Ding, ding, That's ding, right. ding, ding. Yes. Chapter James. 1 and verse 5. Yes. Very well. Very well done. Nice. You guys are so smart. Yes. Very impressive. Right. So you guys put that in your heart, in your head, and in your heart. Yes, here we go. All so right. Let's pray. Let's, let's pray to the Lord. And so listen, it's been a great, great series that we talk about wise. And we want to all get wiser. We want to not only have the right words and ask God them, but, you know, 
as we focus today on asking questions, no, don't be afraid to ask questions. God, God could take our questions, and sometimes he just wants us to, to stop and ask him what we're, what we're going through and put it out there. But the other important part is God will give us the answer, but he's waiting for us to listen. Yes. And so I want to remind you guys that as we pray to God, remember to listen because God will answer our questions when we get really still and don't drown it out with a whole bunch of things. And so as we go to the Lord in prayer, let's join in. Bow your heads, close yes. your eyes, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you today, God. We thank you for our time together. And Lord, we thank you for the story that we've learned both of Nehemiah and Peter before Jesus. And God, we just pray that you'd be with each one of us, Lord, as we may have questions. And so, Father, we know that you aren't you aren't uh, intimidated by our questions. Lord, you aren't scared of our questions. God, you are ready for us to ask you, God, and you have an answer waiting for us. God, it may always be the answer that we want, but God, you have an answer for us, and it's always the right answer. And so, Father, I pray that you be with every boy and every girl, every person that may be joining in along with us, uh, maybe it's an adult or a teacher or, or a, a family member, God, whoever it is, Lord, help us to, to sit and listen and wait for your answers, God. Lord, as we ask questions, Lord, we just we count on you that you will give us what we need. And God, we just pray that you would open our hearts to more of you. God, that we learn more of your word and more that you have for us in our life, God. We thank you for it. We thank you for your word that speaks to us every single day. We ask it in Jesus' name. And we all said together a big amen, amen. amen. And so amen. God, God, will, God don't mind having your questions. And so you guys right. remember that. That's right, and don't forget our memory verse for this month, James 1.5. We That's just right. said it. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, and it will be given to you. Absolutely. All right, you guys, it's been another great Sunday morning. Yes, we've and enjoyed it. Yes, we have. And so don't forget, you can find us on Facebook at Victory Kids Nursery or at Kids Zone. You can find us on YouTube at Victory Kids. Yes. You can find us on Victory Harvest Online or on right. the app. I mean, we're... Out All there, over everywhere. The place. I so mean, we're everywhere. Please look us up. Make okay. sure you're out there for us because we've got lots going on. Remember, we got a brand new series starting next Sunday. It's going to be a great time. Uh, don't forget to join us also on Wednesday for Facebook Live. We actually uh, mentioned this past Wednesday, we might might just see something a little different. If you guys join us, you might find us in a different locale this, this Wednesday. So please join in with us this Wednesday at 630 for our Facebook Live. Uh, That's right. And parents, if you have not taken our parent survey yet, please complete that yes. and um, get that back to us. It's just a couple of questions. We're just wanting to know if you are ready to send your child back to our kids' ministry department. That's right. We are working. So, it's on the horizon. We are yes. working plans to get us all back together in person. So please join in with that because it is coming really soon. And it depends on the, as the, the time we're able to get it together. Yes. And so with that, it's been a great morning, great day. We'll see you guys yes. on Wednesday have a or great next Sunday. Day. We'll Bye-bye, see you guys. next time.